What's up, Powerlifting America? Today, we've got an interview with athlete Waskar Carpio. He's competing in about a week and a half at Powerlifting America Nationals in Austin, Texas on February 24th. He's trying to make the national team in the 59 kilo weight class, and he's doing absolutely everything in his power to make it happen. So I can't wait for you to hear his story and everything that he's putting into this prep. But before I bring him in, I want to let you know that Powerlifting America Nationals will be streamed live on the SBD Apparel YouTube account, which we'll link in the description below. Thank you to SBD and Aleco for the continued partnership with Powerlifting America. If you're looking to compete in drug-tested powerlifting, whether you're just starting out or want to compete with the best in the world, make sure you go to powerlifting-america.com, become a member, and check out our event page for all of our upcoming events. Okay, with that, let's get to the interview with Waskar Carpio. What's up, Waskar? Welcome to the Powerlifting America podcast. You are the first guest. Yeah. You're, you're a national champion, a husband, a father, and now your greatest honor yet, you are the first guest on the Powerlifting America podcast. <laughs> so what does, it, what does it feel like to be the poster boy for Powerlifting America? <laughs> Dude, it's pretty awesome. It's pretty awesome. I am excited about it. Um, I had no idea that I was the first one to be on here. So that's, that, that's cool to, to be the first. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm really excited. Of course, man. Yeah. It's great to have you on here. Um, so you're a man on a mission. Uh, I've seen your recent posts and you're basically saying that, you know, you're putting everything into this prep for nationals It's coming up. We're two weeks out almost to the day mm -hmm. and you're not going to be satisfied with anything less than making the national team and bringing back a world title. Why is it so important for you to be a world champion? We're going to get right into it with the, with the heavy right question. Into it. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, I mean, it's just, uh, it's, it's because of the, the, uh, the mission that I set out to, to accomplish early on. Um, when I found powerlifting, um, two years ago, it was one of those things that it seemed like you, you, you had to train forever to, uh, to get to that point. And some people do, right? I, I definitely understand. I'm not a, I'm not a oblivious to the fact that some people train years after years after years to get to even step on the on the world stage. So, um, but I, it's it's something that I a goal that that I set out for myself, and and uh, it's just one of those things that once I'm in something, once I say, hey, I'm I'm doing this, like I'm all in. And, and I'm not stopping at anything until it's done. So no, I can really see that, man. Like I, I see, uh, you know, obviously I've been following you for a while now, since basically since you won the national championship for mega nationals. Um, and so you started DMing with me right away saying, you know, think about coming over, yeah, making a run at a world title. <clears throat> so what is it about being a world champion, you know, that you think like really sets, you know, is different than just being a national champion? Yeah, I mean, I uh, I recently made a post about this on my on my Instagram, and I, it's it's just like that that world championship in powerlifting is it's our Olympics right now, right? Everybody strives for like the pinnacle of like how far can you take anything that you're doing, and in powerlifting, the world championship is the top. That is that that's that that's what everybody that's in our sport strives to hold one day. It's, it's a world title and all the work. Like I, I was actually having a conversation with this guy uh, yesterday at the gym and I was telling him, we we're having a, a conversation, man, we're, 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 I'm two weeks out. I can't believe it. This is, you know, quote unquote post nationals in June, this has been uh, seven months or eight months in the making. And then he goes, no, it's actually not. It's been since the, the first day you picked up a barbell in the making mm -hmm. and it kind of, put me I will it kind of took me back for a second I was thinking about that I was like no that's true because it, it wasn't from the second that I started powerlifting or post nationals when I started prepping for this me it was from the mm -hmm. first day I picked up a barbell not knowing that I was going to be in a position that I am today that it's all going to lead into that performance in two weeks and then that performance hopefully there in June it's it's all it, it, it's, it's all strived from that first day that I picked up a barbell who knows how long ago yeah, I mean, and and even to go back even further than that, really, I mean, uh, I always think like, you know, you're the sum, a person is like the sum of all their experiences. Mm -hmm. And so, I mean, what you bring to the table as a power lifter, you know, when you first picked up that barbell was you're also bringing to the table the stuff that you were raised with, you know, right. just like work ethic and discipline and and just like who you're doing this for, like your family. Um, 
and in the motivation behind it and all of that stuff, you know, how you were raised, all that kind of stuff. It all, it all adds up to this moment today, that Correct. Moment right now, you know? Um, so it's crazy to think about, about that. And in, I know, so does that, does that freak you out at all? Like, are you, are you the kind of person that's like a little stressed at all about, about like your performance anxiety or anything like that? Yeah, I do. I, I do suffer a little bit from, from from performance anxiety. So it actually makes me happy that when I see the schedule come out for, for nationals, knowing that I'm going to lift at a uh, weigh are at two versus early in the morning is going to help me a ton because going into a uh, primetime nationals in June, when I knew it was going to be in the afternoon, I was like, man, I should be able to sleep this time around because I usually get no sleep the night before a meet when it's a morning weigh in zero sleep yeah <laughs> but now that it's in the afternoon i know that i'm gonna be able to sleep um so that's gonna be nice uh but yeah i mean there it's it's hard not to have those nerves going into a meet like this um but at the same time it's like i i, I keep telling myself and um talking to steve and and kind of getting that that reassurance that hey man and you've done this before uh not only have you done it before it's like you, the most prepared i've ever been just period mm -hmm. Um, so I just need to put it all together, tie a bow on it and show it up on the platform. So, yeah. And I mean, you know, at the end of the day, it's powerlifting, you know, we're not, we're not doing rocket science or anything like that. And so the, the fate of the world doesn't hang in the balance, but the fate of your world in some ways does. <laughs> exactly. And so, exactly. you know, you can make it bigger than it is in your head and everything. And I mean, you know, worst case scenario, let's say you bomb out on bench depth and, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and whatever you come back and do it again next year. It's like, exactly. it's no big deal. like, you know, it's really, it's really not that big a deal at the end of the day, but, but no, I mean, just when you put in so much time and effort, it obviously is a very big deal. You know, you're going to represent the USA on a mm -hmm. world stage. Um, and if, if you make it onto that world stage, onto the national team, I mean, just from the looks of, uh, the competitors, it looks like you're going to bring back a gold medal, you know, Correct. and you're right. going to have the, the U S national anthem playing, you know, you'd be wearing your jumpsuit and all that yeah. stuff. So dude, I mean, I, I'm getting goosebumps just thinking about it. Um, dude, yes, I, I know it. I watched, uh, I I've actually been doing a lot of like visualization going into this meet because sense is going to be in, in the same venue as last year. I have been looking, you know, I'm just in, in, anticipating a similar layout. So I've just been doing all of that. And, and just like that, yeah, just watching all of the other uh, previous national champions that went to world and then replaying their world performance and then watching them on that podium and having that anthem play. It's like this, this no, no it, 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 you can't beat that, you know? Yeah. All, yeah. That's amazing, man. So, so, okay. Um, when, what was, when you looking back at the worlds from last year, uh -huh. um, what was a performance that you saw from, from some of our athletes that like, really captured your attention or like you saw them on the stage on the podium you know with the national anthem anthem playing and like you really kind of felt those same kind of emotions uh i think of it was really uh relatable for like uh, jonathan garcia um mm -hmm. uh him kind of coming from you know people had him you know maybe third fourth and for him to come in there and do the performance that he did to almost winning the uh, the uh, the entire thing is is crazy because you know this this year no no uh, for the folks who don't know in the fifty nine kilo class there's Sergey Fedoshenko yeah. and he's the boogeyman of the fifty nine kilo class and yeah. nobody knows if he's gonna be there right uh, yeah at least and it's like it's one of those things right it's like I'm preparing myself to not only when nationals go to worlds and go against whoever it is, I'm preparing to go head to head with Sergey Fedoshenko because that's what we have to do. The GOAT, um, the GOAT exactly. 59s, right? Yeah, and like, you know, when uh, Jonathan was preparing for his worlds, he was he had Eddie to worry about, with, which mm -hmm. Eddie, everybody was talking about, oh, he put up a seven, I think it was like a 720 something kilo mm -hmm. total, but it was at a high, uh, higher body weight, et cetera, et cetera. So he had all the cards laid against him. And uh, he just managed to put something, uh, you know, uh, a a great performance together that it was it was just awesome to watch and yeah, walked and away I mean, with the with the world record too on the on the squad. Yeah, and and I mean, like you said, he was pretty much a consensus pick for fourth. I mean, yeah. everyone was picking Joe Jordan and Panna and Eddie, yeah. and really overlooking Jonathan. I mean, even Jonathan, like he kind of got overlooked even in our nationals last year. You know, yeah, like I mean, yeah. even people were thinking maybe Rodrigo was gonna beat him. People were picking Rodrigo. Um, I love Jonathan, man. What a great story. Like he he had this uh post after after um he made the national team 
mm-hmm. where he was talking about, and I think SBD uh, produced it and everything. It was so good, man. And it was basically like, when we get under that bar, we're all equal. Like exactly. gravity, gravity doesn't discriminate, man. I yeah. love that, man. It's a, such Dude. a great, it's such a great like uh, perspective on our sport. You know? Yeah, exactly. And that's why I love it so much, man, because it's like, it doesn't matter about nothing. It, it matters to you as an individual, right? But on the platform, when it comes down to it, it's you, the barbell and the weights that are on it. That's it. It, Because yep. everybody waited in two hours before. Everybody has the weight class. Everybody put in the work. Mm-hmm. It's just who who did more, who who executes better, who who does who does it on the day and and it's just like everybody has the same attempts and it's just who's the better man on that day yep, and yep. There's, there's nothing else around it no and i mean and and then on the flip side of that you can think too it's like it, it's it is just who is better on that day too maybe mm-hmm. the next day someone else is better maybe another 10 days someone else is better uh you know six months it doesn't matter what happens on that day is what counts you know? exactly exactly um, so that's really cool. Yeah. I mean, I really, um, going back to, you know, the national anthem playing, I mean, I just, I love Meg Scanlon's story and, uh, the, her come like double comeback and everything. And then to have Leah not make weight and then she's up there and she ties on body weight, three-way tie and wins on body weight. And she's oh, up there God. and the national anthems playing. I'm just like, yeah. Oh my God, I'm like crying at home watching this. Dude. Yes. So I can't wait, dude. I'm going to be, hopefully if, if I'm there with you in Malta, I'll be celebrating with you or else if not, I'll be in this exact room, like posting reels <laughs> Yeah, yeah. and uh, <laughs> I'll be crying right along when they're playing that national anthem, man. Dude, for real. So, okay. So um, we'll get into a bunch of stuff about, you know, specifics of your training, some numbers and, you know, like what you're looking to do in terms of numbers and, and some of the history of your uh training and stuff but um Mm -hmm. let's rewind a little bit because i think a lot of people don't know much about your background including me um so basically i know like five things about you and it's you're from the dr dominican republic you're you were a wrestler which i don't know anything about your wrestling career like i just heard steve mention it on on the uh the other podcast yeah uh you're a husband and a father you know you know which is amazing um and you have a professional career Mm-hmm. And, and you're a badass powerlifter. Like that's yeah. basically it. Like I only know, and I know obviously the most about your powerlifting. So yeah, yeah. take us back, like fill us in on some of the details from the beginning, you know, um, and then leading right up to like your first powerlifting me, like what you got, what got you into powerlifting. So, but tell yeah. us about your background, like how you're raised and, you know, your wrestling days and stuff like that. You got it. So uh, like you mentioned, I'm, I'm from Dominican Republic. I, uh, I was born and raised till I was nine in a small city of, uh, called Las, Las Vegas um is probably central dr um was there till i was nine um i uh i left the dominican republic at nine years old along with my brother uh because we had an abusive father so we had uh he was really an alcoholic that led to a lot of abuse uh growing up to my brother and i um and my mom uh uh when my brother was nine and i was seven she made the decision to come to the United States with a, uh, you know, with the visa at the time to try to get her paperwork all done so we can eventually join her and come here. And that took about a two, it was about a two year process that I was away from my mom. It wow. was uh, back home with my, with, with, with my father, who was an alcoholic and all that. And, uh, you know, eventually the, it, it, everything kind of panned out the way it was supposed to. Uh, came here in 2005 you know, around uh, June, because I remember having uh, the summer off and then you started school, right? It was a whole mm-hmm. new concept for me because even though, you know, back home, I went to school and everything, different little concepts. So we came here in, in uh, 2005. So and... wait, what do you what do you mean by that? So like when was are the school seasons just different? Um, yeah, like yeah, it is it, different maybe from from the way I can remember it. It was longer and there wasn't that like three month break period there mm-hmm. or or maybe the break was at a different time. I, I don't really remember it, but just, just coming here and then not going straight to school was like weird. Cause it was like, yeah. it, we got here right when school kind of ended. So we were going through the process of getting registered and all of that. So we, we were like, had a summer break without kind of going to school with, to begin with. And then we kind of started school in, the, you're in like, September. You're like, damn, this is nice. And you, you were, like, <laughs> you were like nine years old, you said? Uh, yeah, I was nine. Yeah. So for before that, from the age like seven to nine, you were without your mom and you were Correct. just with your dad. 
Man, Correct. that must so, have been tough. Yeah, it was because uh, a lot of like my mom, essentially, she she went to Puerto Rico first. And that's where she met my stepdad. And uh, uh, post meeting my stepdad, they moved here to Washington. I've asked, I you know, I currently live in and reside in a you know, in a Washington state, I asked them like, why, why, why did you pick Washington? Because I mean, yeah. I love the state. Um, and they're like, I don't know, to be honest, we just wanted to be as far away from the DR as possible. So it's like, all right, sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, yeah. that's harsh, man. They're like, they're like, we're getting out of here. We're getting out of here. So, um, wow, Washington. And uh, you've been there since you're nine years old then, huh? Since I was nine. Yeah, since okay. I was nine. Yeah. So uh, since coming here, I, I've been uh, I had to learn English since um, back home. The primary language is Spanish. Uh, so it took it, you know, going to school. Uh, once my mom was already here in the States, she was paying for some classes for my brother and I to kind of take English as a second language back in the Dominican Republic. And this okay. it, it we learned a little bit, but we mainly learned it once we got here. Mm -hmm. So I had to learn English um, to be able to communicate with my peers um and I didn't really start doing sports I went uh, it was elementary middle school I was still was kind of like in my shell through middle school um because I just I didn't want really attention on me not, none of that stuff so I, I did no sports in middle school and I didn't do any sports up until my sophomore year of uh of high school wow. and uh it's a funny story because my I, I used to be a big gamer played a bunch of like legal I don't know for me uh -huh. legends and all yeah. that stuff but played a lot of it and then uh my best friend to this day, we're just gaming out, just wasting time, right? I mean, some people look at it as a waste of time. I do now. Now, I, now that I don't game as much, I look at it as like, dang, I was really wasting a lot of time. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and been uh, getting jacked. Uh, for real, for real. <laughs> and then he 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 looks at me like in the in the middle of, of the game, and he goes, "Hey, man, you want to do cross country?" And I was like, "Man, you tripping? I haven't. I hate running, and cross country is all about long distance running." And he was like, "Dude." To stop playing let's just do it right and i'm okay. like all right whatever man and then wow. we both uh ended up going we signed up for cross country and that's where my sports journey began and did cross country then a similar scenario happens like hey man you want to do wrestling but like what what are you and then it, me and him just kept doing that and then okay. we did wrestling together and then uh a spring we did track together so uh, since, since my sophomore year of high school, I ended up doing uh, sports year round. It was cross country to get conditioned for, for wrestling and then did wrestling. And then track was kind of like a fun sport to just, I, we, I ran like, I think it was the mile, 400 meter and the 200 meter at times. It was just okay. more for fun for me. Um, so I just did that as like my, uh, my last part of the season. But wrestling is, was my main focus in high school. And that's where I feel like I developed the the. The, the the mentality that I have today, the mm -hmm. uh, the tricks of cutting weight or just the mental toughness to cut weight. Yeah. Uh, and that's where I feel like I, I developed the the uh, the the will to win. And because, you know, wrestling, it's similar in a way to, to powerlifting. The mm -hmm. concept is that you weigh in, you you're going against this guy in, in your weight class and and I'm gonna beat you because you because you didn't work harder than me. And yeah. that's, you know, I, I bring that same concept into, into powerlifting. Dude, I love that. Um, and do you think, was it, was there like a coach or, or someone um, on your wrestling team that kind of helped you have that? Or did you always have that kind of like will to win, even from like when you were just doing gaming and stuff like yeah. that? Yeah, no, I think my, my coach, his name is Coach Ellis. I mm -hmm. think he had a big, big play into who I am today because he, uh, he, he actually, when I, my, my first day in, uh, when I went into wrestling, he, uh, I don't know, he maybe seen something in me that I didn't see. And uh, he true, I, I can say like, he really took me under his wing and, and took the time to mentor me, not only within the sport, but my, the, uh, the mental side of things. He never, ever li uh, let me give up on the mat. Never, it didn't matter. Uh, how tired I looked. It didn't matter how how many people I just got done wrestling. I got to wrestle through 10 more because we were preparing for states that mm -hmm. it didn't matter. It was to him. It was how how tough can I make this kid? And uh, it's something that I that I appreciate till this day, because uh, I feel like that has made me who I am. And uh, the the outlook that I have on life on how 
you don't truly know how tired you are or how much more you can give until you're in certain positions. And uh, it's, it's something that's instilled in me now that it, it doesn't matter how down I am or, or how down you can be, you can always get back up because if, 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 if your back's against the wall, it's, it's, all, it's all what it comes down to, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, if, if you fall down or if, if you're tired, you, you, it, there's always a choice to make. And uh, early on, like in wrestling, it was like, oh, I'm tired. I'm going to just take a, take a quick break because I'm tired. I'm a kid. Mm-hmm. I, I want to rest. But later on in my, in my wrestling career, it, it became more, oh, I'm tired, but how much more can I still give? Because I know I have it in me to give more. And that's what he instilled in me to, and, and to this day, I apply it. It's, it. it's when your back's against the wall, you figure it out. Yeah, for sure. I mean, uh, it's interesting because I also did wrestling in high oh, there school. You go. And I also felt like the same kind of thing of like, you're in a match and you're basically like, like you said, it's like you, if you're tired, it's way harder like than it looks yeah. like you. It looks like that sometimes in wrestling, people are barely doing anything. But man, that you get you the, the cardio is like just to the maximum. It's, there's you're nothing like breath. it. Yeah, you're yeah. out of breath. And then and then you find yourself in those moments where it's like time slows down for a second. Yeah. And you like kind of have that choice. It's like, am I about to take this L or am exactly. I, I going to pin this guy? Like, yeah. And it's like. And that's up to you. Like, and mm-hmm. it's, and it's, and I love that because it's such an individual sport. Like it's very Correct. similar to powerlifting where it's all comes down onto like in this moment, mm-hmm. are you going to do it? or Are you not going to do it? And exactly. no one's coming to help you. Like, you yeah. know, there's no like star quarterback that's going to like run the ball in for a touchdown and you don't have to do anything. Yeah. Um, and no one's coming to the rescue. So no. And it's, a, it, yeah. So it's like, it's, it's you. And are you going to, all the work that you put in leading up to that, that moment, that match, that lift is, are you going to let that all go to waste? Or are you going to leave no question unanswered that you gave it everything you had and you can walk off that platform or walk off the mat knowing that, Hey, I gave it everything I had and it just wasn't there on the day. And yeah. that I can live with, but mm-hmm. I can't live with not giving it a hundred and hundred and ten 110% and, and knowing that I did do that, you know? Yeah. So. Yeah, shout out to the sponsor. Hundred. Yeah, <laughs> that was unintentional, but yeah. <laughs> shout out to the sponsor. They should get into wrestling. Yes. Um, but dude, yeah, that's that's uh really interesting because I've seen you. Uh, you know, I was at your meet in Reno, and uh, I've seen the kind of focus that you have. And I didn't know you were a wrestler at that time, but um, it definitely comes across now. Like this makes sense. Like that that yeah. you were a wrestler before. And how how did your wrestling career go in high school? Did you have any uh, idea of pursuing it into college or anything like that? No, I I I, I thought about pursuing it. Um, it went okay. Um, mm-hmm. I did. I, I basically always fell short. Essentially, I I did really good throughout the entire season and all of my losses. I believe I I ended up my my three years with I believe it was like six or eight losses. They all ended up coming out when it mattered, which it was when it was time to go to state. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, so it was hey, it was an okay season. It's tough, but it's a good learning experience too. Like learn how to take some L's gracefully as well. Yeah, you know. Yeah. Um, and so, do you think, like now looking back, like as to where you are in powerlifting, do you think mm-hmm. wrestling is is harder than powerlifting, or do you think it's like mentally tougher, physically tougher? And and yeah. now when you look at powerlifting, it's like kind of like a cakewalk like you know walk in the park kind of kind of yeah I do I do I do see it that way just because of how the I think the the mental toughness you have to have for wrestling is 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 different what they they are two different sports but the the output that you have to put out for wrestling is is much more because in in uh in powerlifting, right? Whether you're doing a single or rep work, you always have that break, guaranteed break. It does mm-hmm. not matter what it is. You know, you, you you do your work and you get you take a break. Some people take five minutes. Some people take 15, 20 minutes. That's why some you know pe- people people make fun of powerlifters because they yeah. think it's like you know you do one one rep and you take a twenty minute break. That's but. that's me by the way because I'm <laughs> on my phone. <laughs> my wife's like, you got to get rid of the phone when you're in the For garage real. training because it's taking me four hour sessions, but you're only doing like an hour of work. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. But you know that's... when you when you clock in in the in the mat room, um, it's go time. Mm-hmm. It's uh, for those two hours of practice. There's little to no rest. 
so absolutely i think that you know yeah. and wrestling was definitely a tougher sport yeah i mean it, it, i think it taxes like more of your systems like yeah. uh, with cardio side of things and whatnot and then also i mean the training for wrestling is crazy with like the hot rooms and everything oh, and man dude all the running and stuff like <laughs> yeah. I, I always tell people like i did more running i also did track in middle school and i was like i ran way more for wrestling than i did for track Oh yeah. Uh, yep. And, and it was, it was tough. I don't see this to this day wrestling and probably like doing concrete construction in the summertime when it's hot and humid. Those are the two hardest things I've ever done in my life. Powerlifting is like a breeze in comparison. Yeah, obviously. absolutely. Obviously I'm not good at it though. So, um, <laughs> But okay, so let's uh, keep going then. And so was it with wrestling? Is that when you first started like kind of hitting the gym as well? No, um, to barbell? honestly, I'm, yeah, no, because wrestling, our our wrestling program, we didn't really hit the weights too much. It was all wrestling, wrestling, wrestling. Mm -hmm. uh, so post high school, you know, I was going, I was going to college. I did uh, a year and a half in college. I did no type of sport, no type of gym or nothing like that. Just because it was like, you know, that's when you're an adult. Um, post high school, I moved out of my parents' house. I've, uh, had my own, my, my, my own place. Mm -hmm. And, um, I was just focused on, on my future. Like, what am I, what am I going to do? You know, figuring it out kind of deal. Mm -hmm. And, uh, my wife, my now wife moved in with me. Um, I believe it was at the end of my co first college year. Mm -hmm. Um, and you know, we were just living together, all that good stuff, but it wasn't until I want to say when I was 20, um, right. that I was, I gained a bunch of weight post high school. So I used to wrestle at 106 to 113 pounds in high school mm -hmm. and, uh, post, <laughs> post, uh, high school got up to 172 pounds. Cause oh, I was just damn. eating, not doing nothing. It was yeah, like, I mentioned video earlier, games. exactly. It was all gaming with my best friend running to seven 11 at three in the morning, getting hot dog and just going back in gaming and not doing nothing better for myself. Wow. Um, so I got really heavy. And I was like, man, I really need to start losing this weight. So in my, my story is kind of similar to, a, a, you know, a lot of other people that I just started going to the gym to lose some weight. Mm -hmm. um, you know, started going to Planet Fitness with, uh, with, with friends of mine. And uh, but still no, no idea what this sport kind of was. And I was just going, uh, you know, and then fast forward a little bit. Uh, COVID. And then oh, actually, I should say this, you know, in while I was training unknowingly, like I always understood the concept of if, if it's leg day i'm gonna squat first if it's chest day i'm gonna bench and if it's back i'm gonna deadlift i always for some reason had that concept down or very early on without knowing what powerlifting was wow and i always set little goals for myself i think you know hitting my my first 225 bench i said dude it's like woo, i made it um mm -hmm. uh, and then you know uh, 315 squat 405 deadlift like everybody every kid growing up has those little little oh. lifting goals right yeah, of course. Um, so then, uh, you know, fast forward a little bit, COVID happened. And at the time I was going to, uh, to LA fitness and as a corporation, they decided to close down. And, uh, I put out a, a post on my Instagram. like, Hey man, anybody know any gyms that are open, um, in, in this area. And that's when I found Spanaway fitness where I currently train at. And wow. I was just going there. I had no idea it was a powerlifting gym. I was just going to do my squat bench deadlift and do a bunch of bodybuilding work. And that's where I, I, I remember to this day, because I mean, it's, it's, it's the story I was doing. I was going for a PR of 315 for six. And I called this dude over. His name is uh, McKay. He goes by KK. And he was like, hey, man, can you give me a spot? I'm about to go for a PR. And then I do it. And then, and then after it's all said and done, after I'm done breathing, cause you know, us power lifter have no cardio now. So I'm like, I'm dying here. <laughs> so after, after I catch my breath, he, he approaches me and say, Hey man, you ever thought about doing power lifting? I'm like, what do you power, power what? And wow. then he, and then he breaks it down for me. And this was uh, December uh, going into 2021. So uh, end of 2020 going into 2021, December slash January. And uh, he explained it to me. He's like, yeah, man, it's just you train and you get nine lifts and, uh, you know, singles. And then you basically max out on squat, bench and deadlift. I'm like, huh. And I never, ne never thought about it. 
That's so interesting that you were, but you had the concept of you were already doing squat bench and deadlift, like Correct. just for yeah, like yeah. training purposes, and you were already like trying to hit PRs. Yeah, yeah. Like because you knew, you obviously you 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 know everyone knows like you want to do something you've never done before, it's like exactly. whether it's rep work or single or whatever. Yeah. Um. So you were kind of already a little bit hooked into it, and then exactly. you just kind of like you know lit the match. Exactly. Pretty much because then when I came home, um. I was like, I was telling my wife about it. I was like, hey man, this dude at the gym, I, I just met him. Uh, he he wants me to do this thing called powerlifting. And then same thing, more like power what? And then I explained it to her the best way I could with the little information this guy just told me at the gym. And she was like, you know, you know, you you really don't have any hobbies right now. You're not doing anything. Why not? Mm-hmm. And and from from that first day, my wife said, you know, I believe you 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 can be great at it. She 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 told me that sitting in the same little spot that I'm sitting right now. Wow. And, uh, and that's where it all began. Damn, and from man. there, I haven't looked back. <laughs> wow. We gotta, I mean, when you get that gold medal in Malta, man, it's like, we got to send some of these people, some flowers or something. <laughs> like, whoever the, the kid in high school that got you to start like doing cross cross country, like yeah. damn, that guy's a saint now. Like <laughs> we, we owe him big time. And then the yeah. coach, coach Ellis, and then now KK, like just like lighting that, putting like the final icing on the cake for you yeah. to jump into this sport. All right, so let's get into it then. So from there, that was like December 2020, January Correct. 2021. Correct. And then it looks like you did your first meet in May 2021. Yep. Exactly. Um, so not too long after that. Um, no. Um, it's I, a short, and, short prep. Yeah, I mean, pretty much. And again, it's, it's like when I am in on something, and sometimes it, it can be a flaw of mine because when I'm doing something, I'm in and and sometimes too, my, <laughs> my 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 wife get, get get gets on me about it because it's like it's i'm i'm doing this and and i'm i'm gonna figure out how i can be the best at it right because one of my regrets in in high school which today i don't apply this at all is i'm i'm always thinking oh i wish i would have blank i wish i would have this mm-hmm. i wish i would have that and that's mm-hmm. something that i that i told myself post high school is like i never want to feel like that with something that i devoted so much time to um so that's why it's just i'm all in now if i'm doing something i'm all in so then when my wife said yeah go for it i was like i, I went back the next day and i was like let's do this dude let's do this I, I i barely know you um and he actually coached me for going into even uh nationals for in june he coached me all the way leading up to that point mm-hmm. and uh he was like all right man well how well, you know what do i do and he was like all right well we got to get you gear he he passed down a bunch of gear to me that that he had that he wasn't using anymore and I just started prepping under him and uh me and him started talking and based on my height uh he was like you know I think you you, you'll be a great fit in the 59 kilo class because we were still under the IPF at that time yeah and then I you know during that moment I was like hmm I'm about 164 ish pounds at that time wow I got to cut down to 130 I'm like all right bet you know let's do it and in a, in a three month period. Yeah. Which, <laughs> like, which for a wrestler, like, yeah, that's yeah. not going to overnight, be overnight. You know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. Um, so I was like, yeah, all right, let's do it. But in it's, it's a different concept when you're losing weight for strength yeah. in, in wrestling, you, you lose weight, you rehydrate, and it's all about trying to maintain the most cardio possible. But in, mm-hmm. in weightlifting, it's like you lose the weight, but you want to maintain the most strength possible. So I ended up trying to do it my 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 old ways of trying to lose it extremely fast and that that obviously backfired that's why my my very first meet that i did is i did it as a as a 66 kilo uh lifter okay and you were Uh, trying to get to 59 i was trying to get to 59 but during one of my training sessions i got down to 151 pounds um and squats were not moving the way they were supposed to i was like god dude and i ended up failing a squat one of one of two squats I have ever failed due to strength happened uh, on my first prep. Uh, and that was because I was just crashing, crashing my weight as fast as I could. Yeah. And so, uh, go ahead. Lesson learned, right? Exactly. Uh, lesson learned. So I ended up doing my first meet as a, as a 66. Then my next meet after that, I believe was in October uh, yeah. state championships. So real and quick that, on the, before we go to the second one, uh, uh-huh. you, you miss a squat in training, but you're, you, you went eight for nine. You only missed your last deadlift. You put Correct. up a five twenty-seven and a half, which is a pretty big total. I mean, I was just looking at 
the results from Worlds this year in uh -huh. South Africa, and the total was a 565. So, I mean, you were starting off a pretty good base, <laughs> you yeah. know, um, yeah, yeah. doing doing a 527. I mean, this guy was right when he saw you in the gym. He's like, this yeah, guy's yeah. got something for He's sure. He's got something, yeah. And so, like, kind of a bad prep, a quick prep. I mean, barely exactly. started powerlifting, and still you go in eight for nine, put up a 527. Yeah. Pretty sweet, pretty good day, man. Yeah, and that was and actually, uh, I feel like I could have done better, but me and him, we were in our kitchen here. He ended up cutting 11 pounds in seven hours, and I did wow. nine pounds in that in that seven hour period. And it was the worst, the worst time I've ever done to this day because you know, prepping for a powerlifting meet, we knew that we were gonna weigh in at seven in the morning for the, for that specific meet. So we cut all of like the sauna work and everything. We started doing it at noon the prior day. So then we were on weight like nine hours before even having to weigh in. Another terrible another lesson learned. Another, another lesson learned. learned. Yeah. Yeah. I was, it's like was... you're, you're nervous. You want to get down <laughs> exactly. sooner, but you really don't realize you got to maintain that now for like oh, nine God. hours. Oh, God. It was the worst. I, I didn't sleep at all. It, it felt like I could hear a feather drop because your body is kind of in this, it goes into starvation mode and you're just kind of like, bro. I want food at all costs right now. And it was, it was the worst, but yeah, I ended up with that, with that total and missed the, uh, the, the, that, the last deadlift on strength, I believe it was. Yeah. Well, it looks like you kind of YOLO'd it too, because you, you went 210 to 227 and a half for that final pull. I mean, yeah. and, and you finished in second place. So maybe you were pulling to, to finish in first, um, because let's spoiler alert you've only finished in first place ever since correct um, yeah yeah so um so hey that's that's a great uh, opening meat story man i mean yeah. what just thrown right into the fire like i i really like dicked around for for years before i ever did my first meet i love that this guy just like helped you and just like got you in got you yeah doing a meet like so quick and then exactly that's and where it, you see the meteoric rise exactly yep and then it kind of all lined up it gave us i think it was like a 12 week period to do like a you know some some of uh some of a prep mm -hmm. and uh you know i progressed as, as 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 best as i could with everything that was uh that i was able to do and we put it together uh as best as we could for that day yeah and so then your next meet was yeah like you said that was in may and, uh -huh. and by the way you were 23 years old when all this took place and you had Correct. just discovered powerlifting and really yeah. weren't lifting weights for very long before this and then the next meet was the Washington state championships. And, um, you did well there. You put like around 15 kilos. It looks right. like, uh, and that on, one was at on 59. So that, so that was my first 59 kilo meet. So that one, yeah. I gave myself more time. I, I learned more about nutrition. I, I just did, did, did everything better. I, I researched a lot more. I was able to come in, actually cut down, uh, I learned about water loading. I learned about hot baths. I learned, you know, spitting Jolly Ranchers. I, I started learning the, uh, the, all of the tricks of power lifters, essentially that, yep. that, that were passed down and, uh, was, was able to successfully make 59 kilos, um, which I knew I always could. Cause I, I, I just kind of looked at it as like, there is no way I wrestled at 106 in high school and I can't make 130 pounds. And I, I, I haven't grown uh, and I haven't gotten any taller. Maybe I got more, a little bit more muscle tissue on me from working out, but there's yeah. no reason I shouldn't be able to be within 17 or 16 pounds or whatever it is, or no, 24 pounds of what I used to wrestle at. Yeah. So that's kind of the way I looked at it. And to be honest, it, it makes it easy to make now uh, 59 or, or, or whatever, because it's like, I kind of what I tell myself is like, there's, there's no reason I shouldn't make that weight when I used to be a lot smaller and I, I haven't gotten any taller. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, of course. I mean, you have, that's, that's great that you have that mentality because a lot of people, they, they don't have any background experience to know what they're capable of. Right. You know, like a lot of people in powerlifting come from like no sports background or they're in a sport where they never weight, weight was not really like if on most team sports, it doesn't really matter what you weigh. So yeah. they don't really have that background of like knowing like what their body is capable of. Whereas exactly. wrestlers really do. They really know. <laughs> Yeah. almost all too well uh what they're so so then after that first meet after the second meet um you really burst on the scene and this is when uh -huh. i found out about you um when you did the arnold and right. that was in you know march of 2022 so yep. this is basically not still not even one year in 
to power correct because your first meet was in may so it was yeah. well, you're going on like 10 months ish in the sport yeah um and wow like you went from like we said like you your first total was 527 and a half then arnold you burst on mm-hmm. the scene put up a 590 like that's a huge 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 yeah. improvement in like 10 months so yeah yeah what, i think what went into that yeah so i think a lot of it it was it was definitely a a mental shift for me because when I did that meet in October, it didn't go my way at all. Like I had real big uh, aspirations for that dream and goals that I was like, man, um, like I'm looking at all the all the records, the the state records, the the national records. I'm looking at I'm I'm studying other lifters like Charlie Yang at the time. He, he I can talk about Charlie Yang a lot with within my personal how I look at him and how much he has contributed. He he does not know any of this, by the way. Okay. Yeah, but how us. much, well, it's, it's, it's like he, he, he proved that in, 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 in this class that you can get it done. Right. Everybody that, like I mentioned uh, at the very beginning, Sergei Fedeschenko is, is, is the guy in the 59 kilo class. Nobody, if Sergei's competing, nobody's watching that day because everybody knows you know, he, he does his openers and, and he wins. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, you have Charlie here on this end of the world and, uh, he's doing amazing things. I mean, he put up at the, at the winter record, winter, winter, uh, record meet. He mm-hmm. did that six twenty two and a half and a half kilo total. And it's like, man, this guy is tall. Like how, mm-hmm. how, how's, how's he able to do this? And that, and that always like, why, not to not take anything away from him of course right but why is he able to do this and i can't like what's mm-hmm. keeping me from being able to do what he does and uh me and him talked um a little bit like after going into the arnold and all of that and uh it, it's kind of where like he kind of flipped that switch and i flipped the switch of like why can sergey do this why can charlie do this and i can't like why not me and that's why i put that on my on my on my Instagram caption because I truly believe that because you know in every single weight class that we have now there's always that guy or there's always that guy in squat there's always that guy in bench and that guy's that in deadlift like usually it's very rare for one person to hold all three records and then the total um but there's there's always that one that one uh that one person that 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 comes around that that can do it all right that that and outlier like, exactly yeah like, exactly yeah. For example, in, in, in my class at Sergey, it seems like he, he, he can do it all. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and that's why I, I flipped that switch of like, why can't I do this? If, if I go in the gym and I, I practice how I'm going to perform on the platform, I do every single rep, I don't cut any corners, I, I do the work that I got to do, why can't I do it? Mm-hmm. Um, like, why not me? And that's kind of why... It, it led to that performance at the Arnold because I, I doubled down on myself. I doubled down on, on, on the nutrition. I, I was more strict on myself. Like uh, Thanksgiving, I don't get Thanksgiving. Christmas, I, I, don't, I don't get Christmas dinner. New Year's, I don't go out. It's, wow. it, 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 was, it was all of that. And that's, and that's what it takes sometimes, which that's, I know with, with, within myself that that's, that's what I got to do because if I'm, if I'm sacrificing all these things now, best believe I'm going to show up on the day and, and be at my best because I know that I have done everything. I didn't cut any corners on my, on, on, uh, on my, I was, uh, for the, uh, for the October meet, I would have been to June, June, July, August, September. So four months out, my birthday's in June. I was eating ground Turkey and rice on my birthday. Cause in my head, if I go out and eat a burger on my birthday, it's going to affect my performance in October. Right. Wow. And that, you're that's, hardcore, that's, man. Yeah. I love that's that. just, that's just what it was. And that's just how I am till this day. Like this past Thanksgiving, there was no Thanksgiving, no Christmas, no new year's. Oh, I saw, uh, that. you know, like planning for, for, uh, for Valentine's day here coming up in a few days. It's like, can't go out to dinner, babe. But, you know, obviously it's like, I'm saying all of this, but I give a lot of credit to my wife because it's tough on her as well. Yeah, of course. Um, yeah. So then, you know, I feel like that's when I flipped that switch of doubling, doubling down on everything that I do on myself, on my family and, and leaving no stone left unturned. 
and that's and then that's when I finally was able to show it on the platform for the first time and the, and, and that's really when I when I when it really clicked like like you can do this like you mm-hmm. can like now now after I did that 590 I it it kind of came down like why 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 can't I do more now what's keeping me from doing more if I was able to progress at a at a solid rate and I'm able to do this what where's the limit and that's and and that's and that's where I'm at today it's like I don't see a limit within myself of where I can take it yeah I mean well when you put like 70 kilos 72 and a half kilos on your total in 10 months I think it it does raise those questions of like where is the limit for me it could be mm-hmm. the sky is the limit now like, right right like, and you see that quick progress and you see especially once you kind of like get thrown into the fire a little bit start taking the sport more serious start like yeah like you said like really doing your research and figuring out what are the tricks of the trade and like what are the mm-hmm. things you have to do to be really good in powerlifting because really your first meet you know you you just learned about the sport so right and it's it's cool to see that once you took it very seriously like that boom you see the results so exactly. then so then after that um you competed at mega nationals but your total it looks like it went down just like two and a half kilos yep um yep. and what was what's the story with that what did you not need uh anything bigger because yeah you put a 590 in arnold then you did 587 and a half yeah. um at mega nets which was in june so it was only like three months later not a real yeah, ton yeah. Of time to prep I- yeah, I mean, I came a little bit more prepared for uh, for Mega Nationals, but that mm-hmm. one, I missed my third bench, just jumped the press command. It, it wasn't yeah. a strength issue. And then de- go, uh, going in with deadlifts, I had, I was dealing, which I still don't know to this day. That's why I am mixed grip now and not hook grip. I was mm-hmm. dealing with like this, like, like a really awkward pain on my thumb whenever I would hook grip. Okay. So going into Nationals, uh, when I was about six weeks out, I could not hook grip at all. So I didn't know how much I was going to be able to uh, pull on the day just because, you know, not, not actually hook gripping. You don't know if they're, your thumbs are whatever. Yeah, um, no, so I, I, just, I do hook grip. So I know. <laughs> yeah. So I just, I just, for, for me, it was just about securing the title because my mind was already made up like post nationals. It was win nationals, make the switch. I, I got, I got bigger okay. fish to fry. So okay. for me, it was all about just, you know, taking what's there on the day whatever I need to win and just move on and leave it behind kind of deal. Okay. I got you. Yeah. yeah. Um, and obviously you, you came in there, you handle business, uh, you went eight for nine again. Mm-hmm. Um, and so you've been going eight for nine now out of, out of your five meets, you know, four out of the five meets. Correct. And it was really just that one meet in October. Um, yeah. Where you miss a couple squats and miss a bench. Um, okay. So after mega nationals, so mm-hmm. tell us a little bit about like, like you had already made up your mind, like what went into that um, about, about wanting to switch? You know, I think it was, again, I, 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 after that, uh, that nationals or the, uh, the Arnold performance, I was like, there's, there's no limit for me. Like I want to take it to the next level, but when in uh, USAPL nationals at the time, it was a goal that I set out for myself and I kind of, I needed, I needed that check mark. Mm-hmm. Um, but I knew that afterwards, I knew that, I, I wanted to challenge myself and take that to the next level because you hear all the stories of like, you don't know what it's like to compete at world until you actually do it. You don't know what it's like to travel 16 hours, adjust to a new time zone in a week, mm-hmm. eat complete different foods or bring your own food, drink different water, like all of it. Mm-hmm. Like that's a challenge that I want. And I want to, I want to be able to say that I'm, I want to be able to say that, Hey, I'm a, I'm a world champion because nobody can take that away from you. Right. It's, it'll always be there. You can always research that in 2023, um, with me being successful at Malta, Waskar was the world champion and there's, there was nobody better than him that year. That's mm-hmm. why he's, he, he's the best. Um, and he did it under these circumstances. Um, and that's a challenge. You know, it's, it's nice to be able to fly four hours and, and compete in a different state, but it's, you, you hear those stories. I mean, Joe Jordan explained it best that he was very confident going into, um, worlds, but it's a whole different, it's a whole different thing. You have to, it it just kind of hit him unexpectedly that, Hey, this is different. Mm -hmm. It's a bigger challenge. It's bigger than, 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 than uh, you think it is. And that's the challenge that I want. 
That's amazing. So that's really what it was all about was like kind of just challenging yourself, taking it to the next level. And just you seeing that there wasn't really too much competition. Was there too much competition for you uh, at mega nationals? How, how easy of a win? There was, was uh, there was, I mean, uh, there was some stuff that happened in the, in the back room going into my third deadlift that I could have potentially uh, uh, came in second. Um, but it was just one of those things where like, like I said, uh, I think in, in, in like the video, if the audio would have been on, you wouldn't, you would have been able to hear it, but it was just, I was screaming, like, you're not taking it away from me. That was uh-huh. after my third pull, because I, I put in all the work. It's it coming down to one deadlift. Like you're telling me I did, you know, 20,000 reps before this one pull. And you think mm-hmm. I'm going to miss this. It's like, no, you're not taking that away from me. Uh, That's so nice. Yeah. So then, you know, there, there, there was competition, but had I been closer to a hundred percent or like not missed my, my, my bench, Mm -hmm. I would have just sweeped the floor. Um, but on that day, um, it wasn't like a clean sweep for me, which is fine. Uh, Mm -hmm. we just did enough to win. Um, and yeah, so. Yeah. I mean, it was amazing. Cause I, I know going into it, um, I'm not sure if, if you and I started DMing with each other, like before mega nats or it was right around maybe right after mega nats. Uh-huh. Um, but basically going into it, I had already had my eyes, like since the Arnold, I was already watching you and I was already dreaming about this is our 59. That's yeah. going to bring us back gold medals and yeah, help us yeah. win team points. And, and at some point, you know, is going to go head to head with the goat and beat him, yeah. you know, yeah, exactly. and there's going to be someone, there has to be, we, we have to find the next, you know, uh, the, an American that can beat Sergey. And correct, correct. when I saw you at the Arnold, like, like right away, as like my antennas are up. I'm like, yeah. this could be the guy. What? And I'm like, look, I'm, and people are um, like, I think on the uh, commentary, Angelo and others were basically like, he's only been, he's only been lifting for like, like a six months or whatever. Correct. And, yeah. and I'm like, this guy's, I'm like, I'm like writing this down. Like, I got to follow. I got to get this guy. We need him on, we need him on team USA, you yeah. know, and we need yeah. to get those gold medals. So yeah, yeah. Um, that's always like the way I'm thinking about. And then obviously, you know, I've been, as I follow you, see that you're a real stand up guy, you're a family thank man, you, you're a professional. You. Um, you got amb- career ambitions as well, besides just powerlifting stuff. Like you're, you're a well-rounded good guy. And so um, it made it super easy to cheer for you. And thank so whenever you, you uh, reach out and we're like, Hey, I'm coming over. I'm like, Oh, thank God. Like, thank you know, God. Like, dude, we <laughs> yeah. got him. We got one. And I remember um, telling people on our team and uh, you know, like people on the executive committee and stuff, I'm like, Oh, we got one. We got one. We got a world <laughs> champ coming our way. So it's like, let's go get, and then my thing is like, all right, we got Waskar. Let's go get another one. Let's go exactly. find another one, you know? Yeah, um, yeah. And so like really cool to see the people that are coming over, um, especially on the women's side, helping us, you know, secure oh, yeah, that, ex- where, yeah. where it's a little I'm, I'm tighter, stoked, where it's, you know, it's a little tighter. We could actually lose to France. Um, right. So very cool to see some of the stuff happening over there. So, okay. So let's go forward then from mega nationals. What yeah. happened after mega national? Obviously you're making the switch. You talked mm-hmm. about that. Um, but what else did you change? I mean, you made a coaching change. Correct. Um, and so tell us like, like kind of what went into that decision. Yeah. So, so going in, going into nationals itself, I knew that my, my buddy that was coaching me, he was going to start his career as a police officer here. So he wasn't going to have time to coach or nothing like that. Okay. Um, so uh, before nationals, I had reached out to Steve and uh, I've been following Steve's content. Like he was the one that I learned how to do what's called a gut cut water manipulation. I watch all of his videos, technique videos to improve my technique. And uh, I knew that if, if my buddy wasn't going to be able to coach me, I wanted to be coached by Steve. It was to me going into that, it was Steve or, or I was going to go uncoached until I find somebody else that I think might be a great fit for me. Thank God so, you, you got a coach brother, <laughs> right? Self-coaching, especially like only being like in the sport for a short amount of time like you have, like that would have been a terrible decision. <laughs> I know. <laughs> so then uh, I reach out to Steve and he goes, you know what? I do have a process. I'm like, ah, <laughs> you know? So yeah. then uh, I was like, oh, that's all right. I respect it. Um, so he was like, post nationals, I'm going to be opening up two spots um, and just fill out the form. I'm going to post it on my story, fill out the form. And uh, we'll see if, if, if we're going to be a good fit. So I fill out the form um, and, uh, and he DMs me. He's like, all right, you ready to do this? Um, and then I was looking at my phone. I was like, honey, I was telling my wife, I was stoked. I was like, honey, Steve is picking me up. And I was just, you know, static about it. And so cool, uh, been, been working with him since. And uh, 
uh, with adding Steve as well, I was like, you know, I've done all of my nutrition in the past. I, I had a good cut at the Arnold, good cut going into nationals. But good cut to me, it was losing, you know, I was two weeks out or so. And I was about 146 pounds on my on my on my night weight competing at, a, at 132 pounds. Right. Wow. That was a good cut to me. Uh, wow. So I was like, you know what? I because after I said, you know, I I've, I've impressed Steve one time with my list, with with anything within the conversations that we've had in the past seven months. And that was telling him how much weight I cut going into nationals. That's the only time I've impressed Steve. He was like, what? You cut how many pounds? That's nuts. <laughs> yeah. So um, he, he guided me to, um, he referred me over to Marcellus and Marcellus happened to have one uh, spot open for, uh, for nutrition. And uh, I added Marcellus as my nutritionist going into this prep. Cause again, it's like, I'm all in. I want to make sure that come February 24th, I have done everything, everything that um has led into that day so i hired you know two of the best coaches in powerlifting i've uh, been working with them since and i i am really glad i did because now they have me at a you know training at a body weight that i would be at like the the body weight that i'm training at now it was i am a, a pound lighter than i was when i woke up to weigh in for nationals four hours later Damn. So you're yeah. way closer, way, way closer to body. Exactly. Exactly. That's amazing, man. I mean, I just think it's like, it's really a testament to you and, and your wife, you know, cause I know everything that you do, you consult with her. Um, yeah. very similar to myself. Like we're such a tight team as a, as a married couple and everything. Um, so a testament to you and her that you just, you make the right decisions. Like yeah, uh, yeah. I, you could have really made some wrong decisions there. Right. Right. Um, and so to pick like two of the best in the game, um, I saw Marcellus made a post recently because you're always like for people like shout out like Lil Was what's what's your handle? It's Lil Waski what? Lil Waski 59 kg. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> Lil Waski 59 kg. Shout out like you guys want to see some shredded pictures? Like go follow this man. And uh, I saw Marcellus had reposted. He's like that boy is crafted. Like yeah, like I love yeah. that. So yeah, you definitely you're a perfect fit like like you and Marcellus like because you got the craftsmanship for sure. Yes, uh, you're willing yeah. to put in that work. So that's a really good fun. Um, you mentioned something there that I think like people have heard about, but maybe they don't really know exactly what it is. If you give us a, a brief like explanation, what is a gut cut? Yeah, so a gut cut essentially you are taking and you're manipulating your your gut content right because at the end of the day what's in your stomach what's in your your colon or whatever it does not help you on the platform so if you can minimize the because uh, for the, the best way i think about it is if you're if you look at how much a, a two plates of chicken turkey and vegetables weigh on top of a protein shake on top of a banana and all this stuff all of that has its own net weight that you would put in your body for that day mm -hmm. versus when you do a gut cut or a gut manipulation, you're taking and eating high caloric dense foods. So like uh, a rice crispy treat, right? It weighs like two ounces, but it's 90 calories. You mm -hmm. put three of those down, you're already one third of the way to your caloric intake for the day. Not really, but you see what I mean? Yeah. Versus in order to get those 300 and, and odd calories from a plate of food, you have to eat closer to a pound, a pound and a half of food of clean rice, ground turkey. So it, it, it all comes down to just manipulating the weight that you put in your body versus the type of food. Because when you're so close out, really, that's not really going to make a difference. Having a clean diet versus eating kind of quote unquote junk food. Some people look at it. Mm -hmm. um, it's not really going to make a difference on the platform because at that point, it's like you're putting this in your body, but it's just to really lower the weight that's in your gut. So, okay. Okay. Yep. And so that'll make a difference of like a couple pounds you think, or it, 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 it depends on how much you weigh, right? Because, uh, a, a heavier individual will probably lose more because they're eating more volume of food yeah. to maintain or keep or lose weight versus me. That's eating less, less calories. I'll probably overall, um, lose a, a lesser percentage of overall body weight. Uh, but you can, depending on who you are, uh, you can count on like two to four pounds, roughly of, uh, just, just weight that will just come off from manipulating your gut. That's amazing. That's great. Yeah. And that's a Steve Denovi trademarked, uh, 
patented yeah. process. Yeah. And I know, I know there's like a famous YouTube video out there that explains correct, it all. Correct. Correct. So, he, he does have a whole YouTube video explaining it. And that's kind of where I learned it myself. Yeah. That's awesome. So, okay. So then take us through your last meet that you had. Yeah. Like, so, so you started working with Steve and you were, you working with Marcellus too, then right correct, after nationals. Correct. All yep. right. So then, and then from there, like, what do you, what changed going into your first meet with power of teen America? Mm -hmm. um, this was back in October. So you had like June, you know, July, September, October, November, you know, you had about four months. Right. Right. Ish. Um, and so, but you, your total went up you know, 10 kilos from your right, best. Right. And I was there and you didn't really have to try very hard to get that. You also mm -hmm. did back down work <laughs> in the back room <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, in, uh, after squat and bench and stuff. So it was a pretty uh, hell of a performance. And so definitely like, yeah, take us into the lead up for that. Yeah. So that one, we knew that, you know, when the, when the qualifying uh, stuff came out, um, we were like, all right, this is what we got to do. Let's, let's, let's get it done. Um, so we had a, we had the, you know, the target in sight what do we have to do to get there and one of the things was to do the uh the qualifying meet and it literally just happened to line up on week three of my training block okay. so that was just week three uh steve switched switched some stuff around going into that day and like you mentioned i went in i did all of my attempts but in between squat and bench i was doing back down squat because that was just on the program i had to hit my volume for the day and then bench, I had to hit my back down bench. And the only one I didn't have any back down work was deadlift. Cause that was, I did that on the, on the following Monday. Mm -hmm. um, and it was really just a vacation day for my wife and I, we went there to like, we stayed in, uh, um, in Lake Tahoe, South Lake Tahoe. And I was driving to Reno to get, I, I had two workouts um, that, I, that I had to do. So I drove to Reno. So it was about an hour drive there. Um, hit my workout, came back, continued our vacation. And then when we, when it came time to compete, we went up there, we did our thing. And then that was it. And it, yeah. just, it just literally just happened. It, it could have been different, right? It could, if it would have landed on week four, I would have done a little bit heavier than uh, the 600 kilos. It would have been week two or week one, it okay. would have been lighter. Um, okay. So it just happened to be week three. And that was, that was, you know, that's what I had on, on that week. And it, and you weighed in at 64. So, Correct. um, so what was your, what was your strategy? You were not trying to cut, you didn't do any kind of manipulation, anything on, nope. on that. I just stepped on the, on, on the scale that morning. And like, I, I, I think you seen me, I think when we sat down, like I was eating my regular breakfast, I was eating pancakes. Cause that's, yeah. I literally eat pancakes every morning. Yeah. So I didn't change nothing. I cooked my pancakes before we left our Airbnb and I was eating my normal foods and it was just kind of like cruise control. Everything was, it was almost like I was at the gym. It was a, it was a glorified SPD session. In other words, yeah. um, that I put it on the platform instead of, uh, in the gym with, 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 with my friends. And how was that experience? I mean, like the meat itself and everything, yeah. how it ran and everything like that. It was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. I think I can't remember the lady's name, but she would, the, the, the one that put Tamara, there you go. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Great lady. I ended up talking to her after the meet and I told her, Hey, great job on this meet. It was a well-run meet and I had a lot of fun and me and her chatted a little bit and uh, yeah, it was a ton of fun, ton of fun. Yeah. I mean, that meet was pretty crazy. Like the, the, um, the setting for it, um, yeah. inside of this expo and they had yeah. this crazy stage and stuff like, I'm really looking forward to seeing that meet grow. Yeah. Um, because I really feel like that is, could be a showcase meet for power of Teen America because oh, the yeah. setting is so huge, like mm -hmm. in that huge sports expo and all that. Yeah. And, and also the, uh, where it's held too. I think it's Reno. It's, it's great. I mean, we, at the time, because I wasn't like eating or nothing like that, there was not much for us to do. And plus with my son, but like yeah. we did, we stayed an hour away in Lake Tahoe and it's like yeah. that Lake Tahoe's beautiful. Yeah. Lake Tahoe is one of my favorite places. So definitely, I think that meat kind of, and, and Reno as a host city is a good one because it kind of has a little bit of everything. Like if you want to do the Vegas style, you know, uh, go party with the boys after yeah. you're done performing, you can do that. Or if exactly. you want to go chill at a, like a lake house on, uh, on Lake Tahoe and an Airbnb, you can do that as well. So exactly. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was super fun. Um, we had you and we had Claire there as well. Yep. And you guys both just like showed out and put up some huge numbers. It was like super exciting. Yeah. Um, and I had a great day. So that was awesome. I think yes. you only, you missed one lift, uh, your second squat. And I think it was like a depth. Was it? A yeah. Depth they, yeah. They <laughs> What's the on, story with that? You know, Hey, I, I will have my own opinions on those judges on the day, but it is what it is. It's just, <laughs> but at the end of the day, it like, it, it just makes me a better lifter. Right. Cause you know, I yes. came back 
uh, from that meet. And Steve and I chatted. It was like, man, you know, that's odd that they call you on depth on that lift. But yeah. Let's switch this around so we can make sure it doesn't happen again. And and we 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 made some small changes on my squat, and depth is not an issue at all anymore. Mm-hmm. Um, so it just overall it just it just makes it just makes me a better lifter. Like I might be annoyed in, on on the day, like man, like yeah. how how dare you call me on depth on that when we when we when we know. Um, Don't you know but, I'm Waskar? Exactly, exactly. <laughs> so, uh, but no, it just at the end of the day they're just doing their job and it just it i i look at it it's like you know if this was the world stage and this happened to me at worlds what, what am i going to do in the, I'm, I'm, am i going to be annoyed at the judges like no i should have been prepared and that's what that and that's the way i look at it. it's like it happened cool what can i learn from it and i learned that hey i needed to make a few changes so that way it doesn't happen again i love that i mean i think that's a real athlete's mentality right there of like basically you got to convince them yeah. You know, I mean, yeah. it's, it's your job to convince them. And if you're making it even close where they got to make a decision, you're leaving it in their hands. Exactly. And, uh, exactly. You, so you got to take, you want to remove all those variables. You don't want oh, them yeah. to be able to have any kind of say in what happens. Yeah. Um, I watch it, a lot of UFC. I'm going to say this uh, quick. I watch a lot of UFC and that's one of the sayings of the, of the fighters. Like, don't leave it up to the judges. Mm-hmm. Exactly. <laughs> don't leave it up to the judges. And I mean, um, so like on that day, you, uh, you went up 10 kilos from your opener to your second, that was the one that you miss on depth. And then you yeah. still went up another 10 kilos. Mm-hmm. So I think that overcoming, because you, like you said, it was a heavy training day for you. There was, yeah, nothing, yeah, yeah. there was really no pressure. There was not, you only needed a total. Like, yeah. so as long, once you got your openers, you were qualified for nationals. So it didn't mm-hmm. matter. Um, but I think putting that like pressure on yourself to like, Hey, no, I'm going to go up and I'm going to bury it. Mm -hmm. That is something that you actually accomplished some, you overcame some adversity on that day. Right. Um, and, and then that was it after that, you were kind of, you did your back down sets, you cruised through bench and, and, and deadlift, you did your back down sets on bench. And so it was a pretty laid back day, but it was cool that you got that little challenge because otherwise you wouldn't have had you wouldn't have had anything challenging really on that day happen to correct so correct yeah yeah i think it's a blessing in disguise right or there's a silver lining to it at least so okay cool so now uh that was that me you put up the 600 and then tell us how things are going now like what's the prediction like I, i've seen your lifts you've been hitting prs yeah, yeah. you know i'm following close um so what's the plan heading here into february 24th um, I mean, I think the, uh, of course, Carpino one is, is number one, right. But with where training's going and where Steve has me projected, I think the, the Carpino one is it's behind us. I think we're going to go beyond that. Yeah. Um, because so, so real quick, like t- we're telling people what that is, um, yeah. the Carpino one, that is the qualifying total that you need to make the national team and it's six thirteen and a half. and a half. So you do have to hit a 13 and a half kilo PR, which right. is, which you've obviously hit like, like what we say, like a 40 kilo PR before. <laughs> yeah. uh, so that's not a big deal, but for, for some people, 13 and a half kilo PR, that's a big PR. No, right. Right. And, and, and I agree. And, uh, you know, going into this meet, I I feel like I had a small chip on my shoulder because on, uh, when the, when the Carpino, uh, qualification totals came out, a lot of people were talking, they were, <laughs> you know, is there anybody that can do this? Is there, do, is there a 59 that can do this in the States? I don't think so. Mm. I think it's going to be one of those things where, you know, uh, the, the U S won't have a 59 in that class. And I was like, bet sounds good. You know, um, I love that. I love that. And because, you know, going into post USAPL national, I was just like, all right, probably is going to be around the 550 kilo total done that before. We'll just do the, whatever I need to win and secure my spot and then just start doing the hardest prep of my life to go to worlds that, that quickly changed, right. Plans change. And, and, uh, we had to adjust. And when the, when those Carpinos, um, came out, the qual the qualifying totals, I, I locked in like right away. I seen them message Steve and I was like, man, you know, it's, let's do it. You know, it's, it's not going to be a, a easy hill to climb, but why not me? why, why can't I do this? And, uh, I doubled down to myself again and, uh, been training my butt off. Um, training is going great. And then, but again, it's like now where I'm at, I, uh, you know, with, with, cause Steve and I talk and, you know, I, I found out after nationals that Sergey does have an, an asterisk in his name. Cause he felt a oh, drug yeah. test. 
Yeah. He um, so, you know, that's one of the, yeah, you know, in, in, in the class, when you, when you talk about IPF 59, it's Sergey, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but as a, he will always have to live with the fact that he used performing enhancing drugs and um, he will always have that asterisk. So now going into this, uh, going into powerlifting America national here is not only do we want to secure the, 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 the world team spot, but we want to secure the, uh, the arguably the highest natural total as a 59 um which would be beating charlie yang's 622 and a half kilo total so that's the goal okay and you want to do that at nats correct 622 and a half all right great. yeah, yeah well, Steve... more than that if a, you know we're 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 projecting to hit more where we're going to land will all depend on how much I've, i'll probably have to pull on my third mm -hmm. um but for sure it'll be a, uh, the goal is to hit above 622 and a half because okay. You know, too too many people were talking about, oh, that's that's a twenty two kilo PR for him to hit the Carpino one. So I was like, yeah. okay, <laughs> sounds yeah. good. <laughs> and I mean, like like you said, it's a, a twenty two and a half kilo PR. That was from your five ninety. I mean, you quickly closed off another ten kilos uh, at the yeah. meeting in October. And like you know, I, I I saw it in person. A lot of people, mm -hmm. you know, they saw the the Instagram uh, posts about it and everything. You had a lot left in the tank, obviously. Yeah, yeah. Doing back downs and stuff like you know, in and and. and <laughs> not really being peaked either. So, right. so, um, because yeah, like I was DMing with you a little bit too, because the Carpino, um, so, so people know what this is, is a Carpino one, which is basically the average first place finish over the last three years at worlds. So if you can hit this total, that means that over the last three years, um, on average, you're going to finish in first place at worlds. Um, so it's a really high, uh, threshold of like, basically power of America is saying, we want to take people to worlds that are going to win worlds, not just finish in the top five or something like this. Like we want to take people that are going to win it um, and bring back a gold medal. And so we set that super high. Um, I think one of the other cool things about it is that, like you said, um, so you can do all different types of Carpino scores. They've been used by uh, USAPL in the past and they've right. used a lot in equip lifting. Um, and you can base it a uh, Carpino three would be like the average of the third place finisher over the last three years. And I, that had been what we use in the past. And so that's where you were getting that number of like, basically all I have to do is hit like a 550 Correct. if we're going to use last year's qualifying totals, um, for making it, for making it to, uh, to the national team. And so when you saw that 550, that was going to be a cakewalk for you. You've already right. hit that. Like you hit that almost in your second meet, like only doing the sport for six months. So mm -hmm. that would have been a cakewalk. So what I think is cool about these car high Carpino scores is like, even though, um, there are other people in your class that are good and stuff, but like, you're definitely head and shoulders, the favorite, um, even though you don't really have like a, a, a head to head battle with anyone, like mm -hmm. you still have a head to head battle with that Carpino score. And so Correct. you still have to show up. So I think it's going to make nationals a little more exciting too, because right, right. even in the weight classes that aren't necessarily competitive, like you're not just going to come and take openers. You got to put up a, 13 and a half kilo PR total exactly and beyond, you know, yeah. to meet your goals. So yeah. I think that's no, and, and exactly. And it's not going to be, and at the end of the day, it's not an easy thing to do in, in the, in the class. Cause I was looking at open powerlifting and only seven, uh, I think six or seven other 59 kilo lifters in the history of the sport have gone just over 600 kilos. Only yeah. two have, I think only two or three have gone over 610 sergey and i think charlie yang and maybe i think another person if i remember him correctly so it's not a it's not a when those carpinos came out that's why i'm sure everybody was like oh you know there, there's not gonna be a 59 and, and even even the 66 you know it, it, every single one the when the, the carpinos came out it's like mm -hmm. bam but it is what it is it's like are you gonna are you gonna step up and take the challenge or are you gonna fold and, and go somewhere else you know and a yep. lot of people are stepping up and and taking on the challenge. Yeah. Uh, like just speaking of the Carpino, uh, for the 66 is, um, yeah, it's seven Oh two and a half. And yeah. I think Jonathan's best total is six ninety seven. And right. so like, he's got to break that 700 kilo barrier, which only mm -hmm. a handful of, of, of men have ever done. Right. Um, so that's another thing that's cool is like, he's going to have to, you know, that's going to be a historic day for him as well. But yeah, like, so when it came out, um, of course, you know, like, uh, I was involved with a lot of the, the meetings and stuff leading up to this. And, 
was very nervous and really wanted to have a good reception, you know, because I want mm-hmm. Poverty in America to be successful and everything. Right, right. And so when when <laughs> the podcast King of the Lifts and others are saying like, oh, I don't think in America, oh, I'm right in the DMs. I'm like, yeah, have you you know Waskar is gonna hit it. What are you talking about? Waskar's got this. And they're talking the 69. No one can. I'm like, you got you guys don't know about Claire. And they're saying 63s met, and I'm like, Meg, you're sleeping on Meg. So yeah, anyway, I mean, and I mean, I do like specifically King of Lift. I have that clip saved of uh, when Ryan, Chance, and uh, Coach Aaron are talking, and they yeah. start talking about the fifty nine. And uh, Ryan, I think he goes, uh, "Oh, you know, he like turns his head a little bit." I get, I just have it in my head because it's like I have the video, I watch it as a reassurance that no, I'm I'm gonna prove you wrong, just mm-hmm. for the simple fact that you 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 didn't believe in me. Like it's yeah. just simple as that. Yeah. um and he turns his head it's like oh that's a 20 what it would have been 23 and a half kilo pr yeah i don't know if i can do this i don't know if, i don't i don't know if he can do that. That, that that's a big ask and then chance uh kind of stays quiet he turns his head he's like and then aaron is kind of just sitting there right so i'm like all right no one's gonna even say my name exactly it's yeah. like okay sounds good which i get it they're just doing their yeah. own based on research and based based on my best total and everything but yeah um at the end you know with with I, I'm coming into this meet with the mentality like I hope the people that are congratulations for going to Sheffield but I hope nobody made their decision to go to Sheffield and not do nationals counting on another class not making the Carpino one mm-hmm, so because mm-hmm. if yeah. not then you're not then you're not going to Worlds <laughs> you're gonna be the spoiler baby exactly um, and hey I mean that's fair is fair I mean you show yeah. up to nationals you hit the Carpino that's what it's all about you're gonna go get a gold medal for Team USA exactly and we're gonna win you know back to back team gold um and that's that's the that's the goal i mean and that's i mean how much does that does that motivate you at all to be a part of a team uh, as well i mean do you do you think that because that's one thing that i think is like it's cool to see like team france coming up and kind of creating this rivalry i didn't realize this as well but i mean um you know russia has won the men's side several times in the past wow okay um, and so it's not just like a sure thing that team USA is just going to sweep this every single right, year. Right. Um, so I, for me being like, you know, one of the people behind the scenes working with power of team America, that is really like my primary goal is like, I want to sweep. I want, I want the men's team and the women's team both coming back with gold medals, um, right. for here until infinity. I don't want exactly. any other country to ever exactly. get another gold medal again. Um, and, and so like, that's, that's my motivation. So how does that, does that play into your motivation a little bit? Absolutely. You know, it's being part of something bigger. Um, cause you know, we are, we all, as long as everybody that makes the team goes out there and do, do, d- does their best and, and, and brings the gold home, um, you know, then we collectively were bringing that title back to the States where it belongs. And, it's it's part of something bigger it's like it's, it's bigger than you like for me going out there and winning a gold medal it's i'm doing it for my for my son for my wife for the country for for my people in the dr that can't afford to go to worlds because it's too expensive yeah like i'm doing it for it's, it's not just me getting that the uh the the gold wrapped around my neck i think it's 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 definitely a bigger it's, it's bigger than me that's why it's like i, I double down on myself Dude, I, I feel exactly the same way. It's one of the reasons why I'm so passionate about Power of the America is the same exact thing of like being a part of something that's bigger than just myself and my own mm-hmm. accomplishments. I love celebrating like like all the successes of our athletes, you know, from from just local level people hitting PRs and getting into the sport. Like I was at a meet uh, in Buffalo recently and there's like 13 year olds and 14 yeah. year olds lifting. And it's just it's so cool to see. Um, all the way up to, you know, the highest level of the sport and seeing Team USA bring back gold medals. So I know, man, I love it. I love seeing it and love being a part of it. So, okay, I got a couple more things and then we'll wrap this up. Um, so yeah, yeah. one thing is, is uh, you just mentioned DR. So just talk about that real quick. Um, I went to the North American Powerlifting Championships. It was in Panama this year. I yeah. met Laura and she is amazing. She's basically yeah, yeah. running their federation. She's not technically the president or whatever but she's, she's doing a lot of work and their, Correct. their team, the DR team is really coming along strong. They had a huge contingency, uh, at NAPF. Mm-hmm. Um, they were, they had a full team. They were like screaming for their lifters. It was super cool, super passionate. Do you have any sort of ambition to go or to go back to DR and like help grow the sport of powerlifting there? Um, you know, I've, I've thought about, 
you know, and depending on how Malta goes and everything, uh, you know, maybe a trip down there would be dope and kind of uh, being there and, you know, telling my story to them and say, hey, no, you, you can do this, you know, it is possible. Um, I was in your shoes before and uh, I got the opportunity. I, I, I worked for the opportunity and I was able to pull, pull it off. Um, and actually been talking with, uh, with Laura a little bit and, uh, you know, it, it would be cool to go, to go down there, but I just, right now stuff is, it's from just, 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 just from what I hear, it's just bad down there. Um, like the, uh, criminal level is bad. So it's just one of those things that I don't see myself going down there soon, but it would be a dope place that I, cause I, I want to take my wife there. I want to take my son. I want to show them, Hey, this is where dad yeah. came from um and that'd be just and you know on top of it being able to go out there and be an inspiration to other people that would be that would be a, an amazing trip well i can tell you that you're already an inspiration for them um because like she was in my dms and stuff uh, right away is like oh waskar's from dr oh man this is so cool i see her <laughs> i see her and other lifters uh you know commenting on your posts and stuff and so yeah um even if you do some kind of like online workshop with them or something uh, it would be super cool um, yeah, yeah and hopefully we'll try um our nationals last year, we had a uh, team Jamaica compete and come up as guest lifters and compete yeah, yeah, yeah. In, in Austin. And, um, this year we've got w at least one lifter I know of that's from Puerto Rico. Oh, um, nice. So, he, so he's on the Puerto Rico IPF team, even though Puerto Rico is part of the U S. Um, and so he's coming out to guest lift. And so I just, I think this, we, we want to try to like raise the standard and like help elevate um, the whole North American region, you know, That's and cool. so like That's the cool. more that DR wins and Puerto Rico wins, you know, the more it's going to spark competition here in the U S exactly. And it's friendly, good, good competition. So yeah. So, and yeah. I mean, I'll, go ahead. Go ahead. No, no, you go ahead. I was saying it was like, you know, like, uh, in France, right. When, uh, Panna and, uh, and them started, you know, posting the lift and showing people that, Hey, Hey, we can do this. Uh, we're, we're a smaller country, but we can, we can put up a fight. And then now look at friends, right? It took, it took three people. I think it was when posting and showing up to uh, Europeans and worlds. And now friends is full of, full of hitters uh, because, yeah. you know, people realize, Hey man, I'm already doing this in the gym. I might as well do it for fun on the, on the platform as well. And now friends has a full team, you know? So it's just, if uh, you got that one person or two people that can, have that people can be relatable in a country and, th and that's that's all it takes to spark to you know to to get that spark in there yeah man and and i think you're you're part of it laura i mean she's she's doing god's work down there like she's yeah, working so yeah, hard absolutely and, uh, so so i'm really cheering for them um for people who don't know we do have a regional inter, uh, international meet our regionals is called the north american powerlifting championships um, it's basically like euros, like you just mentioned, um, for Europe, but for us over here, it's our, it's our IPF regional event. And, um, like you said, people from some of the countries that compete in it, they can't afford necessarily to go to Malta or to yeah. Sweden or to South Africa, but they can afford to go to Panama or this year it's in the Cayman islands. Correct. Um, next year it'll be in, uh, Phoenix. And so definitely the one in Phoenix, like at least come in and uh, check it out, man, because I think oh, yeah. you super love to see the passion uh, that a lot of these countries have and they bring full teams and they're like, That'd cheering be dope. And they're yeah. screaming like it's a soccer match, man. Like it's, it's different. It's different. Yeah, yeah. And I, I want, I want people to, to see it. And I want to make that national uh, North Americans um, a real uh, big event. So maybe That'd be cool. Future, That'd be cool. Yeah. In the future, you know, when you're cruising and you're, you're totaling like 680 and stuff and you can go hit like a 600 on an off day, uh, then you could do the North Americans and do worlds uh, in, dude. in one year. Okay. So, uh, last thing I want to ask you about is just, um, how hard is it for you to stay at 59 and you think that going forward, you're always going to be a 59 or because like you, you like I said, go follow Lil Waski 59 kg, uh, on Instagram, you're going to see this man is shredded. Like, like, like my, my hero, Ryan Lapidat would say is like, he's bodied up, he's diced, <laughs> he's all this. Right. Yeah, uh, yeah. and, and then I also see your posts, like you're kind of a foodie too. And, and so I'm like, <laughs> I see that you want to be eaten. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, uh, so, so yeah, like you think you're going to be able to stick this out at 59. You think one day you're going to make a run at 66. No, I think uh, I, I am built to be at 59. I think okay. 
uh, based on, and, and, and I say that because, you know, as, as a natural smaller lifter, there's only so much mass I can put on every year. Like I, I look at pictures from, from nationals that in June and eight months later now, it's like, maybe I, if, if, if there was like a legit test that I could take, I'd say maybe I gain half a pound of lean, of lean muscle tissue. If that, wow. um, so I think that being that I'm a smaller guy, I'm not going to put on that much more muscle tissue. I think my, my growth that'll come in the future is going to be just by simply doing the work in the gym and sticking to the program, being consistent, t- refining technique. I think that's going to be more of what the growth that's going to come to in the future, not by putting on more size because don't really have room to put on more size right now. Mm-hmm. Um, and I just think that I'm, I'm perfect for the class. And I, the, the only reason that I would say of me switching to a, a different, uh, to, you know, to, uh, to 66, it would be that I legitimately can say that, Hey, I, I maxed out what I can do in this class and it's time for me to move up. But I don't see that happening because I just, I, I haven't set a limit to myself. So it's like, why mm-hmm. is like, why, why can somebody squat, you know, 240 or two, uh, 230 kilos or 240, whatever the record is, why can one person bench 152 and then one person can deadlift 275? Why can I do all three? That's mm-hmm. the way I look at it. So um, that would be my limit, I guess you can say. Is like if if I can do all that, I know that I've maxed out the class, and then then we'll see. Okay. Yeah, we'll see yeah. where it goes from there. All right, brother. Well, yeah. uh, you're you're and you're still young, right? Are you still 24 right now? Or 25. Do you, just have a, you just have 25. a birthday. Yeah, in June. So I turned 25 okay. in June. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. So you're still young, man. You got a long career ahead of you. Like we're going to be saying your name for years to come. I'm so happy that you joined us over here uh, with power of team America and going to go represent the good old USA and bring back those gold medals, brother. Yes, yeah, sir. Thank, thank you so much for taking the time to talk with us. And uh, uh, you know, I can't wait for everyone to hear your story. Let's do it. That's awesome. Thank you for having me on. Um, I'm looking for where uh, 13 days out from yeah. national so yeah. when you're hearing this uh w- whenever it you know it goes up we're gonna drop it before nationals oh there yeah. you go let's do it yeah. then so hopefully people get to listen to it and uh and uh it'll be it'll be showtime here soon can't wait and really fast i forgot um before we bounce um do you yeah. have sponsors or anyone that you want to give shout outs to uh shout out to 110 they've been alongside me um since the arnold they they the uh kevin from from uh the uh, owner of 110 he took me under his wing uh, when I had, I think it was like 600 followers on Instagram. And I mean, I still don't have the biggest following on Instagram. And I know a lot of companies, that's all they care about when it comes yeah. to um, sponsoring. He said, uh, I remember it. He said, I believe in what you're doing. Um, I like the fact that you're you're true to what you're doing. You're you're a hard worker. And he took me under his wing, wing and gave me the opportunity. So I appreciate you, Kevin. Um, and that's it. Thank you to 110 for, uh, for being my, my sponsor through this journey. Yeah, man. Uh, you have that sick 110 singlet. Um, I love yeah. it. Like it looks amazing. Um, and they've been a great sponsor for you. So I, I mean, that's, that's awesome that he gave you that sponsorship with, with, you know, just seeing the promise of what the future exactly. can hold. And I mean, could be. and I mean, anything that we can ever do to help blow you up, because I do know that like, these sponsors do care about following and stuff that's a big part of like my job is to basically help our athletes gain a bigger following so that they can go out and get these sponsorships and make this a sustainable career so um you're paving the way brother so it's really awesome thank you yeah all right well thank you so much for joining us wasker and uh thank you to everyone who listens to the power of the america podcast that's it we're out peace peace